okay? This should be the next episode in whatever the number is because people keep changing numbers on the VOD, so I don't know, but it is definitely the next episode, not the one before, of By the Numbers League of Legends edition with myself, Thorin, my, I don't even know if you're a co-host, you're just another person who appears on this show to talk. You're the expert, the Br Lord Braggart, Monte Cristo, and this show is obviously brought to everyone by Alpha Draft. If you want to play Fantasy League of Legends, as we most certainly do, and you want to win money, as some of us sometimes certainly do. Well, technically, listen, I win money. Sometimes <laughs> I actually win instances of money. You have to forget about the ones you don't win, you know. You can only you can only, you celebrate the good things in life. Why are you going to be negative? Why are you going to drag everything down, you know? So forget forget the bottom line. Just I do win money, definitely. It definitely happens, guys. So <laughs> if you want to be like me and definitely win money sometimes, we, this we is have yet to see. Money. We have yet to see any instance of you actually winning money, but that's, that's okay. That's because most of the ones where I do that are just like in the half and I creep into the top half. Like I, I get two inside and I'm like, that's the sweet spot. No <laughs> point wasting any energy. It misses as good as a mile in that one. You just got to get in there slightly. Or I go for the, like, as you'll see on this episode, I go for the tremendous, like my problem is I don't just want to win money. I want to win money in the most epic imaginable way that men just look at my, like, here's what I hate, Monty. I'll tell you right now is when I lose money and I'm close to the top you know, 10 or whatever, and then I click on the guy who's got the number one and I just see his picks are like half of them aren't even ones that any human could pick. He's just the guy who, <laughs> who randomly threw a dart at a board and he got like, that, <laughs> so, he, he got that the guy who's like the worst and the cheapest would also have the crazy one week that he will never have again in his whole career. That's when I don't like it. Man. So I want it to be where when someone clicks on mine, either they're all like that and he has to just be like, you are a God. I bow before you, infinite wisdom. Or it just is all the picks that make sense. And he's like, yes, yes, this person deserves to beat me. They deserve this money. I don't deserve it. This guy knows the game. So that's my problem, I feel like. I don't just want to win. I want to win on my own terms. In many ways, that's the problem in my career, not just in my life in some ways, you know. But in Alpha Draft <laughs> especially, this hubris follows me around. So, so I assume this means you won some money this week. Is there going to be a segment uh, <laughs> to get in here? <laughs> So yeah, you get into here. How would how would this show start without my my braggart corner or whatever you like to call it? Okay, so, yeah. uh, well, I, first off, remember last last week we were talking about a lot of my picks in the tournament, and we went over a lot of those, like six of them. Okay. So, just as an update, um, I didn't do great in those. I, I had like thirty dollars of of uh, entries, and then I I picked up about twenty five. Uh, back, so I did lose a little bit on those in the end. But uh, at the same time, I had more, more. Uh, I didn't have more tournament entries for Korea on that day, but I was playing a, a couple 50 50s with this lineup. So I want to show this because in the end, I got about 90 back from my 50 50s. So it was like, I think uh, in the end, I put in like 80, 80 overall for just these weeks of Korea, and I came out with like one. 35 or something like that so it was a it was a pretty good net win but we can talk about why i picked these in the uh in the 50 50s because it is it explains a lot so looking at this right now what we're taking a look at so if we look at the schedule from last week uh the the matchups that i had that had players in them were cj versus Janair. so in the 50 50 basically you're trying to just get enough points to be in the top half. And at that point, you you double your money for the entry fee. So uh, it was CJ versus Janair that was involved here. It was uh, SK Telecom versus Incredible Miracle. Um, and then it was the Ku Tigers versus Anarchy. So obviously I picked... I, you want to pick between usually several different teams if there aren't going to be a couple that you can get that are very clear wins. Uh, but then again, remember, this is Korea, so sometimes you want to pick the team that's going to go to three games. So I and I diversified here in case somebody lost. So I picked Prey, who I was pretty sure was going to beat Anarchy. I picked Easy Hoon and Tom, who I was very sure was going to beat Incredible Miracle. And then I had the CJ and Jyn Air head-to-head matchup. So I thought to myself, if CJ is going to win this, given their current form, they're probably going to do it in three games, uh, which means that Jyn Air and Jyn Air is going to get some points, right? 
Um, but I th- said, if Jin is going to win this, they're probably going to do it in two games because they're probably just going to smash CJ. So I tried to take two Jin players and just one CJ player. Obviously, Space didn't get that many points, but Sweet and Trace did well. Um, so I kind of just balanced it out in that way and taking CJ and just the team also. Um, just to make sure that no matter what happened, I would just get in the top 50% of people in the, the half will win. So that's kind of what I did. Um, and so when you do the 50-50, it's well. a bit more scatter shot since you are trying to like hedge the, yeah. the, the numbers. Yeah, and I don't go as hard into like, will this series go to three? Because sometimes you just want the really obvious winners that you know are just going to give you like a good amount of points. Maybe they're not going to give you like a crazy amount of points, but you're not... Yeah, you're just trying to be a little bit more conservative and and spread out your options. And that really usually works for me very well in the 50-50s. And uh, the 50-50s are definitely, I I like them more than the tournaments because the tournaments, like you're saying, sometimes you just have to throw throw at a dartboard in order to like get the big, big win, right? Hope that upset occurs. Oh yeah, I'll, listen. We'll we'll speak about that sort of move later in the show. I'll save my my moments. So anyways, do you have a, do you have another one of note here? Uh, no, no, no. That was I just wanted to go through that really quickly and okay. talk about that from the last week. I mean, that's a decent one in terms of explaining how to do the fifty fifty essentially. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, not, yeah. It's not yeah, like yeah, the best yeah. one because you can see that the CJ ones obviously didn't didn't really pan out. But overall, you got en- you got enough of the the decent players that you had a good chance of getting into the top half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I win most of my 50-50s that I play. I notice even on the 50-50s, though, a lot of people don't really use the right strategy. Like That's another one where the people who are the top on that basically play it as if it was a normal one. So yeah, even yeah, though they yeah, win, even... they've actually given themselves quite a bad chance of, of getting even in the top half yeah, if yeah. everything went wrong on the one team, you know. Winning the 50-50s, like getting in the number one spot, probably means that you're not doing it right. <laughs> you know well, what yeah, I mean? That's it. See, that's the opposite, Monty, of like the swag jar effect. The swag on the 50-50 is, like I said, to be the, the last or the second last guy to scrape in there. And you're like, what, yep. what's that first place guy with much more correct guesses than I am? Do I get an equal prize as you? <laughs> See, it's like being in school, Monty. You're the, you want to be the kid who gets the B but didn't do any work for it. You know, That's who you want to be. You don't want to be the kid who stayed up all night going to get the A when you could have had a fun as well. And this doesn't even count towards your actual degree. You know, you're going you, to, the, the final test comes later. This is just a pop quiz right now. Don't go so hard at it. Have a life as well. So speaking of which, you know, if you want to have a life, if you want to make use of your money, enjoy your lifetime while on planet earth, despite what religions might say about the ethical veracity, I'd say play some Fantasy League of Legends, probably. So, <laughs> <laughs> see, how it, see, if I actually did turn to the dark side, I'd be like the most effective salesman. Just, it's, the, it's, the, it's the earnestness in my voice is that, you know. But yeah, let's, let's continue on. So, yeah, we'll, we'll get to my pick later, which people can probably guess, but it's hilarious. Because here's the, here's the sickest part. It didn't work, but you'll just see how, how close it was to working. So, anyway, we'll start off, as always, in Europe, because... Europe's the region that scares Monty the most. I mean, bear in mind, we don't do LPL on this because even Alpha Draft aren't mad, okay? They don't force us to do, they don't force us to like bet all the money on, Alpha, on LPL. They're like, where, where did all the money go? What, what, you, you, you to be experts. Like, so in Europe, though, with that said, the first question I obviously have to ask is, it's never going to change at the moment that all Fnatic players are going to be super expensive in all their roles. That's just not going to change. So... Is Fnatic, are Fnatic players basically like SKT players to Monty, where they're like a surefire bet and you still build teams around them each time? Well, not this week because they're playing H2K and that matchup could really go either way because H2K has been playing very well also. Probably still going to be a Fnatic win, but if they're, the H2K players are actually like incredibly cheap this week, I, I'm not sure why they're so cheap, but basically if H2K wins... There's going to be a huge amount of value in the H2K players because, for example, a player like Hjarnan, who is putting up 42 points average a game when H2K wins, is the third cheapest AD carry. So, I, I mean... Way, I, don't, I don't know how to use spreadsheets. I'm going to come out and say that. How do I get this spreadsheet to open up properly because at the moment I have like <laughs> it goes like number one number six 16 and so I only see about 10 of them on the side I can't see like a hundred of them in the mid in the middle part um, like the cells what? are all bunch you, you know, know, you know, you know Duncan I actually don't know how to help you with your 
uh, okay. IT issues right now and give you a, a tutorial in uh, Excel. Oh. It's not really this is not really the venue for that, as it were. Okay, um, <laughs> we'll see if I figure out to the shot. <laughs> You may want to check all of the columns and make sure that everything is all the boxes are checked so you can see all of the all of the information. Yeah, I don't know how you do that. Well, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so well done, looking to the games in Europe this week. So on day one, we have Rock at Copenhagen Wolves. Are you tempted by that at all? Yeah, of course. Uh, that could be a, like a big, big shit show. I'm definitely tempted by that, especially because the Rocket players are all super cheap. Like Yankos is 6,400. I mean, there's a real opportunity this week if you if you pick on your team like Rocket and H2K players to just get an insane scoreline. Right? That's that's those are both wins that are definitely possible. Yet the player pricing is extremely cheap for both Rocket and H2K. Like I'll probably just enter. I'm going to enter a tournament and just have like all Rocket and H2K players because holy cow, that could be some value. Okay, but which H2K players are actually worth it? Uh, well, Hjarnan is one, puts up about a billion points. Katsing is another one, puts up about a billion points when they win and is in incredible value. Those two players are both like, Top 10, basically, in Europe in terms of points while winning. So uh, followed by Oduamne. I guess the surprise is that um, Ryu actually isn't putting up that many points in a win. So Kasing and, and Hjarnan are both better picks from H2K. But bearing in mind his salary... Which at the moment is so okay, low. Hyanan's actually 6, something, something ludicrous, like the eighth most expensive AD carry. So that's like a very good pick for both AD carry and flex. Yeah, and Nuke Duck too. Like if you're gonna pick, if you're gonna pick from Rocket, you want to go with like Nuke Duck and their AD carry uh, now, Mister Brawless, because both of those guys put up the points while winning more so than Ryu. So the real, the real value. So you're thinking this? Of, you're thinking the chances of HQK winning are pretty reasonable then. I guess Fnatic. I mean, I would still if if I had to, if you asked me who's going to win next weekend, I'd say Fnatic. But if H two K, it's not like out of the realm of possibility. H two K has only lost one game this season. They're a good team that has that certainly can beat Fnatic. Uh, it's not a stretch. So I'm just saying, if you're entering a tournament where you're trying to get as many points as possible, like one of your entries to the tournament may be. You may want to just take H2K players because they're such value and because it's – if H2K wins, you're going to be, get a billion points. And as you said, like Jankos, not only below average salary on this one, but he's the third to last ranked junkler. And obviously it's not ridiculous that Rocket can beat Copenhagen Wolves. That's actually uh, the sort of yeah. result where Rocket would sometimes win even though at the moment – History would tell us maybe Copenhagen Wolves would win that one. It's hard to tell, actually. The, those two teams have sort of met in the middle at this point in time. Yeah, absolutely. Have you entirely jumped off the Copenhagen Wolves bandwagon aside from that sort of matchup? Uh, yes. Yes, I have. I it no feels like now they don't, produce, they don't produce <laughs> no, they shit don't shows produce in, the, in, in what is nope, now the conventional lose. sense for this show, Monty. They just yeah. pro produce shit shows like they just don't produce good games while losing so well there's also as the seen by them kicking out their jungler yeah i don't know if he was kicked or left or whatever but that's a really bad sign too so i think I, I think that i think that rocket now that they're gonna i mean they're gonna use shook now but he doesn't have any synergy with the team so that's another reason to pick uh rocket players this week as the the likely victors so you say that maybe it's the other way around he doesn't have any synergy therefore he will just disappear into the jungle farm up and come out like meteos summer season 2013 just like hey oh like a sixth carry wreck <laughs> so maybe he will be the boy with the most points monty we don't know now that's one of those things where i'm never that sure that the person really did like retire or like leave the team it's always like yeah he had to go and spend a lot of time with his family and then he said what, what are you talking? i haven't got a family and they're like y you sure you do remember like anyway we're gonna bring in this much better player because like we really hate to but 
welcome the better player. And uh, you can just take that guy's bunk. He's, he's, he's going to be gone in a day. Like, in fact, at the end of the day, his stuff will be packed up. So I'm not so sure that I buy the idea. That was like, oh, as an emergency, we just brought in like a much better player that used to play for our team, but didn't have a team recently because he got kicked. So here's a game that I have to feel must appeal to you. Unicorns of Love plays Giants. Isn't that a game with kills written all over it? I would I would think that would be a pretty nice game for for picking up a lot of kills. Bear now, in mind, Monty, I, this is our stats show. This isn't somebody in that okay. Just remember that context. You must actually have turned around on Giants. Like I feel like they're a team you can you can bet on Giants now. Absolutely. Uh, their flyers. big their big pick is is Adra, who's third overall uh in terms of points in the league while he's ahead. It goes Niels, Hjarn, and Adra. And then surprisingly amazing puts up a lot of points out of the jungle for for origin. But um, yeah, this this matchup could have a lot of points. The problem with this one is I'm less confident in who's going to win. Who, right. Who, do, who are you leaning towards? So you can't tell Monty because it's the two teams where it's like they both should lose. They should both yeah. give up. And then commit Sudoku live on air. <laughs> so I did that just to keep it a family friendly show, Monty. Yeah, I went with the, yeah, with the, with the meme. So, <laughs> so uh, beyond that, like, I actually think that that one's not a bad one to, to gamble on because that's a very 50 50 matchup. So, again, if you want, like, if, if you're playing one where it's not a 50 50 and you want to just go out hell for leather, just get the ones that you think are the most cheap. What? have had good points in the past, you've got a very good chance of you Super Bowl. Well, I think. it's also that you could do something like, you know, you have to be pretty confident that Origin's going to beat Gambit, and the, but the Origin players are obviously very expensive, but we know they also put up a lot of points in a win. So if you could do something like get a, a team that you think is really solid and get their players and some Unicorns players and then make another entry of Origin players versus some and some Giants players, then you're probably going to be doing okay. Um that way you just cover both sides of the, the, the point pinata that probably is Unicorns of Loves versus Giants and then move on so from you there. Tell me, you tell me you've got to be confident in that. Is it so overwhelming? Because every player except the top laner is the cheapest at his role for Gambit. So if you want to take the craziest <laughs> flyer ever, just fill out that roster. But then when, when they actually live up to the promise, you've got the sweet sucker of, oh, yes, I win. Would, well, would you not do that? I've done that many times, mate. I've lost look, almost every single time. I'm not going to lie. Like, it's look, never has I come through for me. I've gotten screwed in Europe because Rocket beat Origin. You know what I mean? You can't forget that Rocket actually did beat Origin and they beat the, they just pounded them into the ground, basically. So it's not out of the realm of possibility that Gambit can do the same thing because when I watch Origin as a team, they're a team that does very well when they're ahead and they, they're very aggressive and they're very good at laning. But when Origin falls, starts falling behind when they mess up early, basically they just keep on grouping and trying to fight you without taking any objectives, um, no matter what their comp is or you know anything like that. So they kind of continue to fall behind if they're already behind, and they don't have a good idea of how to get back in the game. So it isn't inconceivable, obviously, that Gambit takes a win. And, you know, Thorne, this is really why I don't like picking in Europe, because this – Europe – there aren't close games, it seems like. No one's like, it's not like tight back and forth where we have almost the same amount of kills and then the game ends. Yeah. It's always a fucking blowout. Like, everything is just like, even if Rocket beats Origin and that's an upset, it's like Rocket smashes Origin into the ground. So, it's so hard because... When a team, when there is an upset, it's just not close. So, you basically lose all the value out of your picks for your team. And so in Europe, man, I'm I'm very scared of picking anything unless I'm picking both sides of it in a tournament, or I'm or looking you just for you're fanatic and they haven't lost yet. So yeah, that exactly, hasn't happened yet. And now they have to play H2K this week, which is like the probably the game that Fnatic is least likely to win. I mean, they're still likely to win, but they're least likely to win. I mean, here's a, here's, a, here's a question to test you, Monty. So there are no stats for what would happen to Fnatic in a loss. So if yep. someone was to pick Fnatic players, and obviously in most scenarios, they're going to assume Fnatic's going to win. That's going to be an initial premise that you would build the team off. But just imagining Fnatic was to lose, and someone wanted to factor that in. Which Fnatic players do you think would get the most points in a loss, if you had to guess? Reckless, definitely. Because of the way he plays, 
uh, Reckless is is still, I think, the number yeah. that that got yeah, a number one neck. pick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, also, just if if you look back to previous seasons as well, uh, Reckless was just a player who always like performed even when his team was losing, or he was very consistent in terms of point production. So, I think that that he's he's definitely the the top one there. No, I used to love it, Monty, when uh, Elements would lose a game, but Froggen, wait, there was Alliance at the time. Froggen would have like a good stat line and people would be like, hey, why did he just like, you know, you can tell he just played too safe and uh, he didn't take enough chances. Then they'd be like, I'm a huge fan of Reckless myself. And I'd be like, well, I'm done with this. Like, just pull my uh, parachute now. Like, I'm, I'm out of this play. Like, I, I can't handle whatever you guys are all about because that makes no sense whatsoever. Like, you go it the wrong way around again. That player does it way worse than the other one. But enough about that. My time will come with Froggen. Hold that down. Keep it down. A couple more seasons. A couple more splits. Maybe he has to change the team a few times. Who knows what has to happen? Maybe I have to start killing people in the ULCS. I don't know. Whatever it, <laughs> take, whatever it takes. Much like Man Cloud, we will get back to where we rightfully belong, no matter how many teams and how many players have to go down. So here's a, here's a fixture that I'm guessing on day one to close out that you are just going to ignore completely, which is Elements versus SK. I'm just scared. I would be very scared of that one. I don't know how to uh, just- predict this game. I have no idea how to predict this game. I'm scared. Like the big problem hold, I can see me. for those two teams is that just because, just based on history, apparently I don't know any conditions in which Elements is going to win a game. And then <laughs> SK only win the games that they shouldn't, as far as I can tell. So <laughs> those two combined mean I wouldn't even waste any money on this one. Especially because yeah. actually some of the Elements players are expensive in this matchup. Like Froggen's the most expensive. JWoww's second from most expensive. I mean, I don't really know See, that doesn't why seem worth it to me. Froggen is the most expensive mid laner this week. That makes me question things. Maybe Alpha Draft, like, you know, went back and listened to some of the old episodes of and something like, yeah, he's pretty good. He probably will figure it out all this week. He's become <laughs> the best white guy to ever play the game again. And I was like, yeah, well done. Well done, Alpha Draft. But okay. But see, that, that Monty, maybe that shows how far elements have fallen. You know, in all fantasy games, I always just first pick Froggen every time. And in fact, I even, I'll, I'll, I'll admit it, early on in the season, I was making teams around Froggen and Forgiven, and I was laughing like, ha, ha, look how cheap they are. <laughs> I'm loving this. Imagine when they win all these games. And then I actually soon learned that like numbers and statistics <laughs> is like a cold, hard, soulless world that doesn't care about quality of players, <laughs> how beautifully and efficiently a player played, even when losing, to give himself that razor's edge of still having a chance to win the game, but not taking the overly risky players that would also... Uh, you know, apparently, numbers don't care about any of that stuff. Mate. They, don't, they don't give a shit. Like, all they care about is how high the number is at the end, it turns out. So I've become like a cold, calculating businessman who will just... Like, if Froggen was a small, like, farm... That was just uh, they, their crop. You know, it wasn't me really living up to standard. I'd have it just shut down, and I'd like I'd outsource to other country at this point because I've got to just keep my my margins have got to be high on this game. Okay, so again, I'm I'm off the elements bandwagon, guys. I'm off that bandwagon, especially when they're the most expensive player. Come on, you can't. I'm sorry, I can't justify <laughs> buying Froggen over for Biven this week, even though they probably have an equal chance of winning that. But their game, you know, I can't do it. Sorry. How does that make you feel? Well, like I, t- I told you, I've just learned on this show that I flip. I told you on this show, I bet on Kiwi Kid, and like, he, Inox is a pretty good pick, isn't he? He's good when he wins. Like, <laughs> I just, I embrace the madness, you know. I like, I'm like Bane at this point, you know. I just like, I understand chaos and darkness. Like, I've, I've learned to embrace that side of myself. The shadow. This is my essentially Monty. This show, in many ways, actually, is the shadow self to summoning insight. It Everything is. Everything we've repressed and pushed down and denied and said that's wrong is now becoming manifest. And we have to learn to accept that, Monty, or it will destroy us entirely. And we will weep with $100 bills like that Woody Harrelson gift file. In your case, quite literally, perhaps. <laughs> so that was day one. And actually, as we said there, basically, Unicorns of Love Giants is not a bad shit show to bet on. That's probably the one to go for. The other ones, most of them you just have to... I mean, Rockat, Copenhagen Wolves, and L SK to me are the same thing. It's like, it's actually hard to bet even who will win the game, so I'd only go for it if it's value there. And then the obvious one, if you just want to go for, like, surefire thing, is pick one of H2K or Fnatic, whoever you think is going to win, because they both have a very good chance. They're both the best teams. Yep. And then just load up on one. Don't get multiple from the, both teams. <laughs> 
I, I think that, yeah, I, I, you're probably going to, I mean, if you want to enter tournaments here, you're probably going to have to enter on both sides of Fnatic and H2K if you can. Um, I actually think that, I mean, it's, I, man, I hate Europe so much for, for fantasy. It's just so unreliable that I, I, I want to say like, yeah, Rocket's going to win, but I know the inevitable road of fantasy okay, disappointment. Monty. Because in, in day two, I've got you some games that are surefire things here. So game yeah, number one, do. Fnatic versus Gambit. Now, there's that's just load up on every Fnatic <laughs> player. That makes sense, right? Also, load up on every Origin player versus Copenhagen yeah, origin, Wolves. Origin Copenhagen Wolves, that's a good one. H2K, H2K SK. Yep, those three have to be. I mean, by the laws of gods and men, those three must surely be certain wins for the <laughs> higher ranked teams there. And you would think then so. We have, then we have the two shit shows, Monty. You know what? I'll give you. I'll use my real analysis, Monty, that I would take from so many insight, and I'll apply it through the prism of what I was describing before for four bot frogan to tell you why actually Giants versus Elements provides you a great chance to to gamble here. Because here's the history of Giants versus Elements. Okay, this is actually where you might want to pick some Elements players. You know why? Two factors. One, they're always very close to beating Giants. Two, they can lose to Giants but with fantastic scores for a fantasy score show. That's how great elements are. They can throw the game when they have phenomenal scores. So even in a loss, they could get them. So I'd go either way on Giants elements again, because either load up on Giants players and they'll dumpster and it'll be like, <laughs> how hilarious people's great players' careers are burning in the toilet. And everyone's like, I never thought he was good anyway. So there's that madness. You can be the Joker. Basically, if you bet on Giants, Dignitas, Enemy, you are just the Joker at the end of like Dark Knight Returns. You don't care about life. <laughs> But you just want to profit from other people and be like, make everyone corrupt like you and show that the world has no beauty, has no value, no meaning. There's nothing true and insightful about the world. Or you can go for elements and at least enjoy the Pyrrhic victory of very good fantasy stats when they lose this game. So that's my Thorin's kind of preview, very unique <laughs> preview for elements versus giants this week. <laughs> Meanwhile, Rock Hat Unicorns of Love, what are, we, what are you going to do on that one? Ignore? <sighs> God. See, see, this is where you're being tempted. Rock Hat, unfortunately. Here's the trick yeah. of Rock Hat, Monty. They are a mirage that makes you think that against anyone except elite teams, every game's a 50-50. But, but is but it, though? Here's the but thing about, it? here's the thing about Rock Hat, though. Their players, particularly Nuke Duck and formerly Woolite now, well, Woolite, Mr. Raleigh's now, uh, they do super well when they're winning. They're, like, very, very point heavy players win rocket get a win here's a crazy so, statement for you, i'm always tempted they are to the, like they are the enemy of europe and, I, and the fact that yeah, i even have true. to say that shows how yeah. sunk, far they've sunk that i have to say yeah uh, nuke duck's sort of the inox of europe uh, oh, mid lane yeah it's a mid laner now so like <laughs> okay so so does that make you okay in that case in a match like this which isn't ridiculous they could win they're a pretty good gamble then yeah, I mean, they always are, or they have been up until this point, just because they do win so hard. You know, unicorns of love just aren't quite so rewarding when they when they when they take a game. When when UOL wins, they don't put up a lot of points. It's usually very close. Vardex is their best player, but he's like the fifteenth best player overall in terms of um, in terms of uh, just point production while they win. So unicorns of love really isn't that good of a value, even when they win most of the time. The Rocket is. The carries on Rocket, the AD and the mid on Rocket definitely are good pickups if you think Rocket's going to win. Unless I'm mistaken, that you actually, it doesn't seem like the day two tournaments are up at the moment, actually. No, they're you? not. No, they're not. So, okay, they're not at the moment, but that's a problem. We don't know the salaries. But yeah, in general, there's the rough form of how it should go. Like, Fnatic should definitely beat Gambit. H2K should definitely be SK. This one isn't as certain, but in theory, Origin should definitely beat your company. Those three should be the locks. So if you want to make lock teams, it should be Fnatic, Origin, H2K. Those are your big hitters. And then if you want to go crazy, both of the other two, you can pick whichever side you want of it for the reasons I said. You can go with the Rocket players because often some of their players are cheap but get a lot of points and losses uh, in wins. Unicorns love, actually, in general, we usually say stay away from. I mean, it's hard to get points out of them, bizarrely, just which doesn't make sense because they do get this, they can have such kill heavy games. And then Giants Elements, listen, for the way it's going, we got recently, Giants probably, probably do get your points. But also, that's a game where if he's cheap enough, Froggen's actually not a bad pickup, probably. 
Indeed. Right, let's go to NA now. Now, as we go to NA, this is where I will now bring forth my team, Monty. You remember the point I made last week where I said, just to show you the power of the dark side, like you did, I'm like Vader, you don't understand the power of the dark side, Monty. I told you I would make a team that was not only made out of Dignitas and NME players, but I would attempt by going with only those two sets who were going to be quite cheap because they're all underdog teams in these matchups because they were against like TSM, etc. I would then try to get the most leftover money I can. And I can tell you right now, the swag jar, as I call it, with the leftover money was like 5K <laughs> on this, Monty. I got it to like 5K and I left it. Now, the hubris of it was, Monty, is I've now learned that you can't be purely evil. You have to... Here's the secret I learned. Now I understand why they have the virgin, the sacrificer. You have to taint something good with evil. That's how you win with dark magic, okay? That's the sacrifice, okay? I was just going purely evil. I was sacrificing some haggard old woman, crone, you know, who's she's already given her life to the evil forces. So there's not that much to be sapped from that, you know, once you saw. If you see what we're going to bring up now, the madness of my screenshot. My problem is I tried to make it so that NME and Dig would both win. And then I would not only have the most swag jar, but I would be like number one by far. I would be like a god amongst men. Like I'd have like the perfect score thing. And people would look at mine like, oh, my God, what, what is this? I, I don't know if I can be a part of it. Look at this and look at the, look where I am. Monty, you have to be 20th to get paid. I was 28th with this line of work. I had 5K extra. Look at the madness of this. This shouldn't even, this is an, this is an abomination to all that is right and so But look at the point store. I almost did it, mother lover. Look at this. I was doing work. And remember, I'll just tell you who they were playing that week as to how insane these picks were on T. Okay, so they were playing, Dig played Tip and Liquid. So yeah, they were both underdogs there. They happened to win this both is, of those. This is from the Liquid win, I think, right? Because this was uh, Gamsu going 11-0. No, wait. Who, who are they playing in this game? I'm not sure because NME won their first game, C9, but they lost to Tip. So this must have been day one. Because it's it's a enemy yeah. win and a dignitas win. Yeah, I'll double check actually, but I think I think you could be right. Let me have a look. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was it was actually, yeah, it was day one. So this is where they both won. This is where enemy and dig yep. won. It's actually so, surprising that you didn't do better with with both teams winning that and some pretty good score lines here that you weren't actually that high up. But you see the madness of this roster. Like, look, look at these yes. picks, Monty. Look at my three carries that are going to take me home are Core JJ, Inox, and Gamsu. And I'm just like, uh, oh no, who, who was the on oh, the Inox? Let me see. Oh, yeah, Otter, yeah. That's the madness that I went with. See, I mean, the problem Damn. here is Dig Task won. They got me 17 points as a team, so. They won that game, by the way, Monty. I know that's the stat line of a team that could have lost the game, but no, they actually won that game. Yeah, still likely to win. Didn't take out as many, like, 11 turrets, but. So, yeah, just to show you all. I'm gonna, I'm, now, I'm not going to give up on the strategy, guys, because it's hilarious. And remember, I would have won, and I'd have had 5K left over. Like, what, you losers need to full <laughs> 50K or whatever? <laughs> I do it with five. And the worst players in the league. But I'm going to keep up this strategy. But like I say, my plan from now on is you pick one of the servants of evil like that. And then you pair them with one or two of the really good players. Yes. But I won't. But I have to keep it. What I won't promise I won't do is I'll never use all the money. Like I'll always keep some swag jar. So now it's, I'm going to try and win, but then I'm going to try and up the swag jar amount. My problem here is I, I wanted it all, Monty. Much like everything in life, <laughs> I wanted not only to pick all the stupid players who never should win, not only to win real money, which I, this is real money I would have won here, guys. But I also wanted to outrage people who who looked upon my works. And and just wondered what what was going on and in the world. Despair. I also wanted I also wanted the swag jar, and it was the greed of the swag jar. It was it was wanting that five k when I could have gone with an obvious pick. I mean, remember I could have just used that five k and just picked like a baller ass carry as well, and probably definitely have won this thing. By the way, like if I'd have picked <laughs> one super carry instead of one of the one of those two, like if it, instead of like otter or whatever, I could have probably won this mother, but. So we'll see. I'll keep with that straight. I'll give you updates. I'll, it'll sort of be like in Game of Thrones that last season where that maester just keeps updating Cersei for some reason about like his work that he's doing on like reviving 
a certain character. I won't give the spoiler, but he's like working on a certain character and he keeps saying, like, oh, work is coming along well, my lady. Like, it'll be like that. There'll be these episodes every week. Might, maybe this will be called like Thorin's Abomination slash Swag Jar Collection. <laughs> and uh, one day when I succeed, it'll be glorious. That'll be one of the best episodes, guys. It'll be like a great callback. So anyway, we'll go into NA now. I just want to set the tone that that can really happen in NA. You can bet on those players. Look at all those players yeah. there. None of the best players at any position and you can almost win a contest. Now, I do have to say, unfortunately, because I never even got to the last place, I'd just love some of the guys who are in, like, 26, who probably had, like, reasonable picks, like Bjergsen and stuff, to be like, well, at least I'll, I'll do what I do, like I said, just check out who beat them. Like, oh, what do this guy beat me by one is? What, what, what is this? What? So I guess I don't know anything about this game. And then I hope, naively, that they see who it is, and they're like, wow, better tune into that Summoning Insight show. Uh, oh, no, that's the wrong one. By the numbers. <laughs> tune into both, if anything. You get... You get good info from both, I reckon, but that's not the one sponsored by Drop. Well, it is technically, but not right now. <laughs> so in NA, in NA this week, we have a bunch of hard games. Not for, not for some people, Monty, but I think some of these are hard to predict. So the first one, tip versus gravity. I mean, where do you see that one? That's, that's a 50-50 if ever, I think. But remember, remember, Thorin, that... Gravity is like the worst team in NA in terms of fantasy points. Like they continue to close games without getting a lot of kills. I mean, the best player from Gravity is actually, I think it's Hauntzer. Yeah, it's Hauntzer. And he's not even like top 20 in terms of points when they win. And Alltech is a few spots below him. So um, if you contrast that with Impulse, like Apollo, Xiao Wei Zhao, and Rush are those top three players on in terms of points on on Impulse. And they're all like close, they're like in the in the top ten, basically. Or maybe top twelve. And here's so the good news. Most of the tip players are quite cheap are because they're cheap. obviously they're lower in the rankings and they're, they're expected on paper to lose this. But actually I think it's a very this is one where I think it's actually really good they're value. not bad to pick because they're they're at least a 50-50 to me, whereas the odds obviously have them as slightly less than that. So I think so you've got a good little window to go with there, especially because you can get people like Impact, the fourth cheapest top laner this week. Right. Yeah, definitely. That's, I mean, Impact, Impact is, produces about 30 points a game, which is still higher than anyone on Gravity when they win. So I, basically there's just almost the entire team of Impulse is above, <laughs> except for their support, is above any member of of gravity so even if gravity wins it's just not even worth picking them because they they produce so few points so unless it's going to be some sort of massive blowout for gravity where they get a lot more bloodthirsty than they ever have been so far this season gravity is just they're like the new cloud nine the cloud nine in previous seasons was horrible in terms of fantasy points because they closed out games that they won too efficiently, and they never put up the big numbers. And gravity is the same way. So after that, we go into a world where we have liquid CLG. Now the problem here is, CLG is a team that you've been hyping every episode. Like you, all, it's the same things. Money always like, did you know double lift and loss has X, Y, and Z? I mean, he only has one loss, by the way. So I'll just put that out there. Uh, liquid, like Piglet, always good numbers, etc. So. The problem with this one is, again, someone has to pick who's going to lose this. Is it obvious that Liquid's going to... I mean, the problem with this is, isn't this the two teams who are really good laners right now? Uh, I think CLG has a little bit better team fighting, and I'd still put odds on CLG to win this. And the thing you have to remember, too, is that in the top six players in terms of fantasy points, like Double Lift, Poe Belter, and Zion Spartan in that order are all top six players. So... They put an insane amount of points on the board uh, when they win. And at number seven is Quas, and he's the highest on TL, followed by Piglet, who's more around the 15 range. So if you think CLG is going to win this one, and yeah, some of these, these players are expensive. Actually, Zion Spartan is not that expensive. But here's one for you, Monty. So Doublelift's 9,300, Piglet's 6,900. Yeah, so if there's that upset, obviously Piglet isn't that high up in terms of points uh, compared to Doublelift, who's number two overall. Shockingly, for those of you interested, Nien Tanso or Nien is now the number one player in terms of points well ahead on Team 8. But then again, they're also incredibly unlikely to beat TSM. Yeah, the beauty there is that they don't win very often, so that's how, <laughs> yeah, that's how you get stats like that. So, 
So Doublelift, I mean, it's just CLG's players, especially those three, Doublelift, Poe Belter, and Zion Spartan, put up crazy amounts of points. CLG's a very kill-heavy team. Uh, if you have to pick somebody from TL, you, you're going to want Quas. Uh, Quas followed by Piglet. Um, and if there's a Team Liquid upset, yeah, that could be some pretty good value right there. But basically, if CLG wins and they're expected to win, you can bank on a lot of points from the three carries from CLG. So TSM versus Team 8 is what should in all real life be a lock. But as usual, the same advice as every week. Don't ever be fooled by Darius being the most expensive top laner. Like, that is throwing your money yep. down a drain. <laughs> uh, yeah, pretty much. And also, I can't even imagine the experience of using a player on a fantasy team and then having to watch him never receive ganks and his head smashed <laughs> in for half the game. Like, at the end of the, you have to remember, guys, think about the way Darius's career goes. If at the end of the game, if you're a TSM fan, you go, oh, great. I was worried there for a while because he was losing a lot. Of, he was getting killed a lot. But we won the game. That's all that matters. Like when they win the game at the end, if you only pick Darius, you don't get anything for that. Like that doesn't that doesn't really help you. You know, like other people getting hill, kills doesn't help you, especially if he's dead at the time. It's also sure. it's also that both Darius and Wild Turtle are insanely bad values right now. Um, both of them only have about a 60% kill contribution rate and are in the lower half of players in terms of points while winning. So now if you contrast that with Bjergsen, who's number four overall and who averages 41 points in a win, that's like Bjergsen's the big one you want to pick here. And yeah, that's why he's so expensive. After that for TSM, actually the next highest player is Santorin, who's about 32 points. But you know, I don't think it's really worth picking a lot of TSM players outside of Bjergsen right here. They're likely to win, and Bjergsen is likely to get a, a very large amount of points. So if you, I mean, 10,700 is so expensive, though, that if you can shoehorn him into the roster, then that's okay. So I assume you are not even going to touch C9 TDK. No, no, actually. Uh, sneaky. Now, Cloud9 hasn't won that many games, but when they do win, Sneaky gets over 41 points a game, and he's third in he's the, the league most behind Yen and Doublelift. Yeah, but he's also... But TDK is still more than Doublelift. <laughs> <laughs> but Doublelift is more likely to lose, I think. TDK, yeah, I mean, versus C9. You don't know that's... the depths of hell that Cloud9 are in right now, mate. When they lose a game to all the subs of TDK, that will be the moment that, like, the, the whole world is just shattered and you find out that actually you live in a dark iron prison and that there's no hope whatsoever. It was all a dream, this whole world in which we had a great team that was going to get it together. Incarnation was going to do it, bro. And I think was that's going to happen. So. so so, even though you might think that's a lock, I would just stay the hell away from that one. Now, here's a great one, though, Monty. Dignitas versus NME. This time, you can't lose when you bet on one of these guys. Now, here's a crazy question for you. The... the, the, the Leaderboard tells us Dignitas should be a big favorite to win this. Do you think they will win it? Um, I think they'll win it, yeah. And not only that, but if you go for Dignitas, the, the players that you want to get are Gamsu and Core JJ. Uh, obviously, Gamsu is quite expensive this week, but he also puts up the most points on Dignitas, followed by Core JJ. So those are the guys you primarily want to go with. Um, Shifter, I'm not sure if Shifter's worth 8300 when... Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm not sure about putting the enemy guys up at all because even though Otter and Inox, now they started the season kind of at a very good point ratio while winning, but they've dropped pretty significantly right now. So Otter could be good value if you think enemy's going to win, but I just, I just, if you can get Gamsu, that's a pretty good value pick, I think. Gamsu and, uh, and Core JJ. Because Core JJ is actually only 8,500, but Core JJ also puts up about 33 points a game. So he could be really good value among the AD carries or as a flex pick, actually. Okay, so that's day one. On day two, we have Gravity Liquid, which remember last time, Gravity actually won. So I'm going to check, but I'm assuming that must mean actually the, there will be some interesting salaries for this one. Let me have a look. Or day two isn't up for that either. So, but I, yeah, I, if I had to guess, you might be able to get some value there because obviously you don't want to bet on the Gavity players. You actually want it to be where Liquid have reasonable odds there. And you have to, basically, for this one, I can already tell you Monty's advice. You just have to hope that Liquid's well, going to win 
and then bet on actually, Piglet. Actually, I mean, we have the salaries of available yeah. to us, um, and it's seventy one hundred for day two for Piglet and seventy four hundred for Gravity. Up. Those are some really good picks. Absolutely. Uh, and for Quas, you mean? Yeah, seventy four hundred for Quas is actually that, that's a steal in a game that Team Liquid is uh, likely to pull out. Now, tip C9. The problem here is tips actually kind of slumping a little bit. So, is this a, ge- a game that you would bet on? I mean, I think C9 is... It depends on how they do versus TDK, but I think that Impulse is definitely looking stronger at the moment. And again, Impulse has those big, big point makers in, in Apollo, Xiaowei Zhao, and Rush. So if any of those players look like they're going to be scoring quite a few points in that game. And again, they're not that expensive. They're about 7,600, 7,700 uh, in that range against Cloud9. Then, So TSM CLG is obviously, in theory, the H2K fanatic of NA, except that in this one, the underdog actually wins more often. Now, is TSM going to win this one? I think CLG is going to pull through this time, but that's a that's a hard call. That is a hard call. So what would you do then? Bearing in mind the CLG players will obviously be very. I would assume their salaries are quite high. Yeah, double is about eighty four hundred. Now they're not going to be as high the CLG players because this isn't like a big lock win. I mean, Dignitas versus <laughs> TDK is much more of a lock win for Dignitas, right? And that's yep. why players like Gamsu is eighty three hundred. Core JJ is eighty two hundred. That's actually not that bad for guys that are pretty much guaranteed to make you points. What um, about the NME teammate game? Are you going to do anything I, with that? NME, maybe. Uh, but they're pretty expensive, actually. 8200 for Otter. That's that's like something that I'm, I'm not as certain about. And so having having the NME in there may not be... So what do you do with value. CLG TSM then? Because people are going to want to bet that game just to for the interest value. So... In, when you're making teams, will you still pick carries from those teams? Will you make one team that I has probably Bjergsen? Will. will you make one team that has double lift? has double lift and like Pobelter and Zion Spartan. Yeah, Be- remember Bjergsen and Santorin are the guys that put up the most points on TSM. So I'd try and have like one team with that and then another team if, with as many of the CLG carries as I could get. That makes a lot of sense. You could also, if you're doing like a 50-50, see if you can get both double lift and, and Bjergsen and then try Is and, it known uh, if... Keith will play. Uh, they have TSM said that Keith was not playing this weekend. Okay, so it's definite. Just in case people are wondering if that's going to turn into Keith if they bet Wild Turtle, but it won't apparently. Okay, that's probably get more now. points. Probably would get more points out of Keith. Honestly, <laughs> Wild Turtle's points are absolute garbage for an for an eighty carry right now. Is there any have one you, NA player who seems like he's on the rise in terms of points? The the only the only eighty carry who has lower points fantasy points than Wild Turtle is Alltech, and that's by point three. So that's pretty indicative that you don't want to pick Wild Turtle. He almost is never worth it. There are so many other junglers, and even support even Aframu averages more points than Wild Turtle in a win. So yeah, you definitely don't want to pick Wild Turtle. That's a that's a bad selection. Okay, so Korea starts. In not that many hours, actually, less than twelve hours. So, on day one here, it's IMCJ and then KTSKT. Now, isn't this a hot? Is this one where you can still be confident to take SKT players? I mean, it might go to three games if they win this time. So, if anything, you might get SKT players, but in three games, is super duper points, right? Right. Obviously, this is going to be a really contested matchup. Just given KT's current performance, I think you do. You do kind of, hmm, hmm. Hold on, let me pull up my spreadsheet. So, yeah, hold on, let me sort this. Okay, so, um, I'm not sure because the thing, remember that KT is a team that Arrow and Someday, when KT wins, KT is a very bloody team. When KT wins, they get a ton of kills, and they absolutely put up crazy numbers. Arrow and Someday and Nagne are all in the top five of points. In Arrow's one, Someday's three, Nagne's five. So KT winning here could actually be some some pretty amazing point totals. So then what especially if I told you because Nagne is how, the cheapest mid laner? Yeah, exactly. 
if if KT wins this, that is crazy good value. Now, are they likely to win it? Probably not. SKT is currently on a 14 best of three win streak. Um, and players like Faker are really good value. Uh, they probably play Faker instead of Easy Hoon, but Faker gets so less just points. Just a flyer if you take the KT players. Yeah. Faker, though, the thing about Faker is that, and the rest of SKT, is that they kind of don't put up that many points even when they win because SKT has been so efficient at winning and closing games very quickly that a lot of the SKT players just don't put up that many points. Like we're talking like 33 points a game for Faker and 37 for Easy Hoon. It's probably going to be Faker playing against KT. So then which is it? Do you bet on SKT thinking this could be the team to take them into the deep water and give you the mega points and you know, make, no. make it easier? I think, or do I think you go S- to gamble on KT? I think I think you go the gamble on KT because KT is so insanely cheap right now. And like I said, if KT wins, Arrow someday and Nagne are, are going to put up a billion points. Even score is like eighth overall in the league. So when KT wins, KT is the team you go to because when they win, they put up a lot of points. Now, I don't think they're likely to win. And maybe you stay away from this matchup altogether. Um just because of that reason. But SKT players really aren't that efficient when they win. They really aren't. Like <laughs> they they just don't put up that many that many fantasy points. Like Bang is really low at 25 points. Marin only puts up 28 points. Like they suck in terms of fantasy points. And they're I don't think it justifies the expense. So here's an interesting one for you, Monty. On the IMCJ matchup, in a sane world, in the past, we would have said, right, CJ should win this match, you know, oh, they should bet on. Well, here's an interesting one for you. The AD carries of CJ and IM are identically priced. Uh, well, that should not be right. They're well, we'll see. 7,800. So which... This is there not a, a pit time to take space at a cheap value? Yes. That's a good value for space. Uh, now, again, the person you really want on CJ is Coco because he's the one who goes off. He's actually number two overall in terms of points while winning. So 9,300 is definitely a good buy for him. And surprisingly, the other player from CJ that you really want is Ambition. He, he's the second most uh, in terms of points on the team. So Coco and Ambition should be the core if you're going for CJ. And that's probably going to be a pretty one-sided win for CJ just because I am looks like an absolute mess right now. So those guys are, are good pickups. Okay, the other two matchups, and these are on day two, but obviously Space day is one, good too, like you're saying. So we have Spenu Anarchy. Now, obviously these aren't considered good teams, but does history tell us this could be a three-gamer? Uh, no. Probably going to be 2-0 for Anarchy. Anarchy has been pretty decisive in their wins. But again, possible very good value. Uh, well, Mickey's really expensive. Mickey does really well when they win. The other two players that do very well are uh, Sangyun, Lyra, and Iksu, or three players. Anarchy is a team like KT. When they win, they get a lot of kills. There's a lot of value here. So from is those the, players are expensive, the ones you just listed. Sangyun, Sangyun actually is only 7,900 well, for the other AD three, carry. basically. Yeah, Iksu. Uh, yeah, Iksu's on the more expensive end. And Lyra's on the more expensive end. But I think Songyun could be like a really good pickup this week. And then Jin Air Najin. Now, this must be three games, surely, with these two teams. You would, you would think that between these two teams, it would be three Who's games. Who's actually going to win it, though, Monty? I would definitely pick on both sides of this matchup because I am just not sure who is going to take this one home. Um, so then let's go by salaries then maybe because if we go on salaries, we have people like like actually, well, Goon and GBM, whoever gets to play. Remember, this is what unfortunately this is a team where they could play any of the mids, but those two mids are almost identical, 7,900, 7,800. Yeah, I'd, I'd pick Goon here. Uh, he's So on Najin, <clears throat> the main carries that you want to pick that get a lot of points are OQ and Goon. Uh, Goon should definitely be the priority because he has been putting up the really, really big points uh, so far this season. Um, on to on uh, Jinair on the other what hand. What if I told you that ID Carry is the cheapest in the league for this day? And it could be Captain Jack as well, remember? Uh, yes, Jinair is Captain Jack. You definitely so want to pick up good, Captain Jack. Pretty good He's buy been there. putting up yeah, he's been putting up very good numbers recently. And remember still, Chaser in the jungle, 
He has an 85% kill contribution rate. So he's a part of nearly all of Janair's kills, and he is actually number two in terms of in terms of points for Janair. So that's a really good pickup. So Chaser and Captain Jack for Janair are probably going to be your top two priorities, especially because of how cheap Captain Jack Would is. Would you bet both sides of this? Yes, yes, absolutely. Because Duke saying, is cheaper than Trace. Wait, yeah, well, Trace may put up more points than Duke, actually, surprisingly. I think he does. Watch, a lot of the Najin players aren't that good of value, actually. Watch is and Pure are very low in terms of points, so if you can avoid those guys. If you can avoid, if when you pick Najin, if you can pick a jungler and a support from like a different team that you think is going to win, like CJ is good because Ambition uh, puts up all those points, that's who I would go with instead. I'm trying to find Duke right now. Yeah, he's pretty. Duke is actually pretty low in terms of points too. Trace is more likely to to get the points. So that's that's kind of who I would look for out of there. And I would I would go for both sides. But if I was making a team, I'd take like I'd try and take one team with Janair players, and then prioritize Captain Jack and Chaser, and then probably GBM, and then maybe try and pick something super safe like some CJ players in the other match, and do the same thing with Najin, but do Goong and OQ. Uh, and probably the team of Najin only, and then if I could pick up some more point value players, uh, like, for example, uh, the, some of the CJ guys, like Coco as a flex or something like that, I would. Um, right, so on the next two sets of days, we've got CJ versus Samsung. Now, are you still on the Samsung train where the ADK no. is worth paying? It's not anymore. They've, you finally well, weaned uh, off that. Well, it wasn't that. It was that the Fury started getting much more expensive because Alpha Draft figured out how good he was. Um, he's still so he's like a very he's priced consistent. out now. The, yeah, the, uh, he's going to be. I'm trying to look at for his salary on day two. I actually don't know what his salary on day two is going to be yet, so I can't say. Day three and day four, you mean? But okay. Yeah, day three and day four. So. How likely is CJ Samsung? Oh, I do. Games? It's it's seventy five. Sorry, I, I was looking at the wrong column. It's seventy five hundred. But then again, going up against CJ, I, I think CJ is just gonna win this pretty handily. So I guess I'm not that concerned about it. Just like so, Koo is a Koo's a bigger lock against IM than CJ is against Samsung. But the Koo yeah. players are not that great yeah. in terms of points when winning. Okay, so better to go. They're with not. CJ they're not that great. And so, surprisingly. Hojin puts up the most points while winning out of any any coup player, which is a little weird considering that like Kuro, Smeb, you think of these really good players that are on there. Prey is actually pretty bad in terms of 80 carries, in terms of point totals, because you have to remember the Ku Tigers are a team that play the map well. They're not very bloodthirsty. So they win and they win cleanly, but they don't get a lot of kills while doing it. Now, here's a matchup that basically is a similar story to Junair Najin, which is Najin KT. So it should be a right. three-gamer as well, right? You'd think. But again, KT players, if, they're, if you can get any for a lot of value. Now, they're going to be really expensive against Najin. But Najin's doing better overall than Ku is right now. So the Najin players, let's take a look at OQ. No, they're both pretty similar in terms of salary, I think. So this is going to be a hard one to actually pick heavily for Najin or KT because the players are going to be so expensive. So are there players? So out of those two, though, which ones are you more confident in the carries of to to KT. win the money back? KT, you think KT, KT's going to win the game. Well, it's just like it's one of those things where it's hard, even if you don't think KT is going to win, because even if they do win, they put up so many points, like ridiculous numbers. KT is a team that wins hard and they lose hard. <laughs> so. so the last game, obviously on paper, should be a, a very interesting game to watch. But SKT Jenner. Okay, in the past, we'd have said this is definitely three games. Won't this just be a 2-0 SKT? Probably. Yeah, probably. And the thing is, is that the, the SKT players are very expensive for this match on the, the second set of days. Um, does that so scare you? It, it does a little bit, but here's another point. Chaser, in, on days three and four, Chaser is only $5,900. 
if Jin Air can engineer an upset, the value from a player like Chaser or Captain Jack, Jack's at 5,200. And I don't think that, that there's that big of a discrepancy, honestly. Jin Air is still a top team. They're actually tied for second right now in the league overall. And it's not out of the realm of possibility that they pull off an upset here. And if they do, the value is going to be absolutely crazy. I mean, Jin Air's 5-2 and two overall, for, overall, SKT's 7-0. and oh, But if we actually look at the game score, it's 14-2 to two for SKT versus 11-5 to five for Jin Air. So there's not really that big of a difference. I don't know. So I think that if, if you can get Chaser at 5,900 and Captain Jack at, what, 5,200 or something like that, that is crazy good. And because they're cheap, load up the rest of your team and just assume that that upset happens and then you're going to just bowl over yeah. in terms of points. Yeah. So, so okay, that's, from that, day, that, could be, that could be a possible upset with a lot of value. So from day three and day four... Basically, if you make a team with those Jin Air players, then you're going to put in some of the expensive CJ players, perhaps, maybe it's the other players. Yeah, or the Coup players. Uh, CJ is probably a better bet in terms of points, but the Coup is more... You have to pick. CJ, better in terms of points, but more likely to lose to Samsung. Coup, worse in terms of points, but almost not, almost entirely not going to lose to IM. So. Okay. I think that's it for this episode, unless you have anything to, to add. Uh, no, I think that's, that's, that's pretty much it. Okay. So I had to let you add there, Monty, because we do this by the numbers and roll the credits. It's a, it's a form of arithmetic.